How's it going everybody and welcome back to my channel. There are a lot of new players these days that are migrating into the realm of Paladins and it's most likely you've clicked into this video to either learn more about the game, learn how to improve your skills, or learn to play Paladins from the very beginning. But that's all good because you've definitely come to the right place. As a long term Overwatch and Paladins player I'll be sharing 25 of my most vital tips and tricks to get you started that I wish I knew before I started playing the game. You may be either completely new in the hero shooter genre or coming over from Overwatch, regardless this video should have you covered. We will be taking things right from the very beginning to accommodate all players so that the very first time you load up Paladins you will already be one step ahead of your competition. If you find this useful be sure to subscribe to my channel for more Paladins content. Anyway let's get started. Number 1. Do the tutorial. Many new players come into the game without ever actually completing the tutorial. And to be fair, the Paladin's tutorial is not actually that great, I must admit, but at least it teaches you the most basic fundamentals of the game, including how to control and move your champion, shooting, how to use your ultimate, and finally the requirement to capture a zone and push a payload to win the siege game mode. The tutorial itself only takes about 5-10 to 10 minutes, so definitely put this first on your list when starting off in the game. Number 2. Practice in the shooting range. The Paladin's shooting range is the best place for you to try out each and every champion to familiarise yourself with their abilities and even try out their talents. Talents within the game allow you to use your champion in three distinct playstyles prior to the beginning of a match. The shooting range will even allow you to try out any locked champions which you currently do not own, so it's a good chance for you to test drive a champion before you purchase them. In the shooting range, your ultimate meter will rapidly fill as well to give you the ability to test each champion's ultimate. There are also plenty of enemy victor targets to kill on the map, and it's a great place to adjust your sensitivity and control settings. Number 3. Learn the game modes. Paladins consists of three main game modes, Siege, Team Deathmatch and Onslaught. Siege is the primary game of Paladins and requires you to capture the zone location in the centre of the map in order to begin pushing a payload. A team claims victory once they score 4 points to win the game. The team that captures the zone becomes the attacker and earns 1 point for their capture. The attacking team is then given the opportunity to try to push the payload to the enemy end zone, earning them an additional 1 point if successful. If the opposing team successfully defend, they then earn 1 point for themselves. It is important to note that the defending team cannot win their fourth point by defending so when the game ties at 3 all, the team which captures the final zone in the last round wins the match. A good thing to note also is that unlike Overwatch, multiple players on the payload does not make it move any faster. However in a similar fashion once the round time is over, it will enter overtime whereby at least one attacker must remain on the payload to continue the round. Team Deathmatch is a simple game of 1st to 40 kills, and Onslaught is a King of the Hills style game, whereby holding the zone rewards 1 point per second and 5 points rewarded for a kill. Number 4. Siege Catch-Up Mechanics So one of the unexplained secrets within Paladin's Siege mode is that the game actually contains catch-up mechanics for the losing team. If the winning team reaches the 99% needed to capture the central zone location to begin the push, an overtime bar will begin to deplete to allow the losing team to fight for control one last time. However, if the losing team is capturing the zone location, the percentage will actually reach 100% at a much faster rate, and if no enemies are within the zone, no overtime will be applied. Number 5. Stay clear from ranked. A lot of Paladins players will often suggest that ranked should not be played until you master at least a dozen or so champions and learn the basic fundamentals of the game. Only once you know each champion and how they play against each other should you be entering the ranked mode. By this point you should in reality know basics such as champion counters, good team composition and all the gameplay strategies involved such as positioning, flank routes and zoning. Personally in my honest opinion the general population of new players should have all or 90% of champions unlocked before even considering ranked. Be sure to spend plenty of time in casual honing your skills because ranked is definitely not the place to be trying out new champions. Due to a ban system and the one champion per match rule, you will also need plenty of champions in your inventory. 
in case your so-called main is either banned or picked prior by either your teammate or your enemy team. Number six, learn the maps. The best way to familiarize yourself with the maps is to simply play the game. Unlike other games such as Overwatch, it is important to note that all Paladin's maps are symmetrical in level design, so there are no clear major advantages no matter which side of the map you spawn from. The basic map design of a Paladin's siege map also consists of three key lanes if you like. This is similar to other MOBA games. They can be identified as the left, middle and right lanes depending on your spawn towards the center zone. Once you understand the map's overall layout, this will allow you to take advantage of high ground for sniping locations, or find out of bounds zones for fatality killing enemies, and also learn the best flank routes for the flank class. Number 7. Play to your strengths. You have the best chance of survival if you play to your own champion's ability strengths. For example, if you're playing as Genos who can heal through walls, be on the other side of the wall away from possible enemy fire. If you are a Terminus, a melee champion, find ways in which you can decrease the gap between you and your enemy. If you are a stealthy invisible sky player, hide in the enemy backline and wait for the perfect opportunity to surprise attack those enemy healers in the backline. The same can be said with playing with your overall team composition strengths. If you are damage heavy, get ready to go in guns blazing. If your team consists of multiple flanks, wait for the flanks to eliminate key targets before you fight for control. Number 8. Positioning Positioning is a key skill you can carry across from Overwatch or other MOBA games. It is the number one soft skill you need to learn to survive and it's what makes a truly great player. Be out of position for a second and it could easily mean your death. Many new players often overextend themselves preventing them from escaping or having a way out. Position yourself so that other teammates can become your strength. For example, if you're a support healer, always have a damage or frontline between you and your enemy. They will protect you with their life, at least in a perfect world. If you're a frontline, it's simple. Just simply get to the front and hold your shield like your team's lives depended on it, because they do. If you're a flank, don't attack through the middle lane. Choose either the left or right lane to sneak to the back. It's too often that flanks fight through the main lane only to die instantly due to having literally the lowest HP in the game. And if you're in damage, make sure to position yourself from enemy fire either behind the front lines, but be aware of enemy flanks that might come from behind to kill your support healers. I like to call this the circle of trust. As the team moves throughout the map pushing the payload or capturing zones, the position of all champions within the team should move organically within the environment. Number 9. Buy new champions. After test driving new champions in the shooting range, begin your quest to buy all of them within the game. If you don't have the founders pack or champions pack, be sure to save all the gold you earn through quests or by simply playing the game to spend on unlocking characters. The normal price is 60,000 gold and the newest champions are a little more expensive. Also keep an eye out for the weekly champion rotation to temporarily trial them within the available game modes. Number 10, create loadouts. Unlike other hero shooters such as Overwatch, whereby one hero is always the same playstyle, in Paladins you can customize a champion to your specific playstyle through a card loadout system. By allocating 15 points among five selected cards from a total of 16 champion cards, you can truly create a champion of your own. Cards can also be powered up up to five levels to increase their effectiveness. For example, if you want to make enhancements on one specific champion ability, you can upgrade all cards relating to this one ability. If you want to increase your champion's base health pool, then you can choose to do so. You also don't have to do this entirely on your own. You can simply search an existing player's name, even pro players, and import their loadouts for your own use. All cards are also now completely free so there is entirely no pay to win. Rest in peace, cards unbound. Number 11, bots until level 5. Okay so you've just played your first few games of Paladins and gotten that 40 kill streak. You must think that Paladins plays are all scrubs coming from your other game right? Well you're exactly wrong. Each and every one of those enemy plays is a goddamn bot. And in fact you won't see a real player until you reach level 5. Why? because it will make you feel good and prepare you for the real world. Plus no one wants you on their team trying your first champion and learning the ropes. Have fun until then. Number 12, team composition. 
this is where the magic happens. Unlike Overwatch where you constantly change heroes in spawn to adapt to your enemy team composition. In Paladins, the entire team comp is handled prior to the match even beginning. Team composition can be decided towards playing a strength, maybe you want two front lines or maybe you want all front lines and one support, but in general the game asks for at least one of each of the four classes, being damage, support, flank and front line. At the top of the pre-match lobby, yellow boxes will appear indicating a missing class and potential gaps in your team composition. Be a good teammate and fill in the gaps or lock in your preferred champion fast so that others can work around your choice. Your team comp against the enemy team can heavily affect the outcome of the match, especially if two evenly matched teams go head to head. However, if you find that you have a gap or major weakness in your team, have no fear, there is always the in-game item store. Number 13, the in-game item store. The in-game item store is essentially your second chance to rebalance the game or turn the tides, shall we say, in your favour. The item store allows you to purchase up to 4 items which will help you improve your champion in certain aspects of the game. There are 4 categories within the item store. Blue for defence, yellow for utility, green for healing, and finally, red for offence. For example, Wrecker will increase your damage to shields. Use this if the enemy team has multiple frontline champions. Cauterize will decrease healing for a small duration per hit. Use this if the enemy team have multiple supports. There is even morale boost to get your ultimate faster or master riding if you want to ride your mount faster into the battlefield. Learning each item is crucial to create new strengths and rebalance the game to your favour. In the meantime, the enemy team will be doing the same thing. So as you get kills and complete tasks in the match, you'll gradually earn currency to spend within the game. By the end of the match, both teams will be heavily equipped with items. Number 14, Mounts and Zoning. When you enter the battlefield, you will always ride in on a mount, which is often a horse or similar creature. This allows you to traverse the map at a faster pace to get straight back into the action. Be careful not to use any abilities as this will dismount you off your horse. And there is no way to remount as well, so it will always be a long walk to the control zone. Being hit by incoming enemy fire will also dismount you. This can also be used as a tactic to your advantage, often referred to as zoning. This requires you to dismount your enemy as early as possible from spawn and cover routes to the capture zone to prevent them from reaching the zone within the certain time. Number 15, make friends. Playing Paladins as a solo player is often seen as a disadvantage as the game often places you in matches against larger team stacks. This is basically a nightmare, especially in the casual queue, so make friends with good team members when you find them so that you can bring your best new allies to your next fight. Another advantage to this is that you will also earn an XP and gold boost for playing within a group. Number 16, communication is key. Similar to other team-based games, it's important to pay attention to the audio aspects of the game. Both enemy and ally champions will often call out a phrase before they use their ultimate to give you the chance to react to the situation. You can also listen carefully for stealth champions such as Sky and Strix as they make a sound when they exit their stealth. Also, it's a team-based game, so communication via text chat or voice chat can play an important part of the game, allowing you to strategize your next attack. If you don't have a keyboard or microphone, try to use the in-game voice commands to call out team strategies such as flank left or group up. Number 17, Ultimate Ability. Your champion's ultimate ability is one that can turn the tide of the game. They are often much stronger and much more meaningful, which is why you require the full 100% meter to be able to use them. Use your ultimate wisely as it takes a while for it to recharge back again to full. If you want to do a heavy push against your enemy, it's often better to group up and let your team know via voice commands that your ultimate is ready. This will allow you to time your ultimate and combo your enemy. Some ultimates can set up kills for other team members, such as Ceres using her gravitational pull ultimate for allies to get kills. Ultimate attacks can also carry over to the next round, so if it looks like you're not able to push the payload at the end of this round, Maybe it's best you save it for the next round to win the crucial capture zone. It's important to note that ultimates in Paladins are also far less lethal than their Overwatch counterparts, so they are not as game-changing, shall we say. 
just be sure to have your ultimate ready when you need it most, which I also like to call plan B. Another good tip with ultimates is to always keep track of your enemy ultimate in the back of your mind. If a champion hasn't used their ultimate for more than one round, it's most likely they have their ultimate charge ready to go. Number 18, passive health regeneration. Rather than constantly asking for healing like an annoying Genji, in Paladins there is a cooldown at which point your champion will begin passively healing on their own. This is also known as out of combat health regeneration and is visible on a cooldown meter underneath your health bar. After a few seconds of not taking any damage or using your primary fire ability, your health will slowly begin to regenerate to full on its own. Take note that you may still use your other abilities, just not your primary fire. You can even improve your out of combat health regeneration rate by purchasing the veteran item in the item store. Number 19, Watch the UI. Another cross skill you may have already learned is watching the constant feed of information on the user interface. Firstly, under the settings, be sure to set the show team UI option as enabled. This will display both team's health at the top of the screen, and you will also be able to keep track of ultimate percentages for your own team. Also keep an eye out on the kill feed as this tells you which champions are currently dead and which ones are awaiting to spawn. Number 20, fight or flee. The match is won by the outcome of every encounter, so you should know when to fight or flee. A lot of this comes from knowing encounters and how well you fare against encountered enemies. If you have more numbers in your encounter, the chances are of you pushing through your enemy and winning are much greater. Rather than specific champions countering each other, in Paladins it's more of a class countering another class. If you're a support champion, it's more likely you may need to flee if you encounter a damage or a flank in a 1v1 situation. Always group up when possible and if you are outnumbered, use an ability to escape and regroup to the safety of team members. As always, don't overextend yourself as this increases the likelihood of becoming outnumbered. Think of it as almost like a tug of war. If the enemy are pushing too hard, regroup and wait for others to spawn in before you get back into the fight. Number 21, pace your battles. A lot of new players think the most important part of capturing the zone is to rush onto the objective. Sometimes it's often better to circle around the zone and eliminate a few key enemies before beginning to cap the zone. If you can make the 5v5 become a 5v3 in your favour, they will not only be able to push you out of control, but they will also have to fall back and regroup. Stay alive and recover with your supports as health can always be recovered, but death means by having to wait in spawn and being unavailable for the fight. Number 22, know your targets. The champion that you select at the beginning and the class that they fall under gives a very broad role in what you should be doing throughout the match. If you're a flank, you should be trying to focus on taking out the supports and the backline, or enemies singled out of position. Don't waste time dropping a frontline as they simply have too much health to take out alone. Another example is that if you play damage, make sure you output as much damage as possible, especially on shields. Number 23, shields. There are many different types of shields in the game, mostly handled by frontline champions. The shield damage appears in yellow text, so they are easily identifiable. Be aware that some frontline champions, however, have shields that are not affected by Wrecker and therefore cannot be damaged in this way. For example, Wrecker will not work against an Atlas shield. Number 24, farming and freebies. If you plan on playing Paladins in the long term, always try to log in daily to receive your free crystals. Currently, you are able to earn 50 crystals per week just by logging in every day, with the 6th and 7th days rewarding crystals rather than gold. Over a period of a month, that's around 200 crystals, so you're almost on your way to a free battle pass every few months. Also try to complete quests if you are aiming to unlock more champions with gold, or increase your battle pass level. These quests can also be completed, or shall I say farmed against bots in any of the training game modes. Number 25, never leave the match. Finally, my last tip for you today, and especially for those coming from other games such as Overwatch, is to never give up. Fortunately in Paladins, there is a comeback mechanic implemented in the game. Leaving a game means that the player is eventually replaced with a bot, a major disadvantage to the remaining players left in the match. If you leave, you'll also receive a deserter ban, preventing you from playing until the ban is over. This begins at 30 minutes and increases every time you leave the match over the 24 hour period, which can be up to several hours. Okay guys, you made it to the end of this incredibly long tutorial. You're basically ready to join the realm and destroy a competition. 
Again, if you guys enjoyed this video, it would mean the world to me if you would subscribe for more Paladins content. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time and welcome to the realm.